Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. Normally I would do this on a Friday, but I'm doing it a day early because we have something special. Luminar Jupiter is out today. Hi folks, like I say, this is normally a photo Friday thing and I would do a Lightroom Tuesday thing. So if you want to keep up with those things, you really should subscribe. All right, so let's dive in and start talking about Luminar Jupiter. We've looked at Luminar before with Neptune and previous versions, as well as showing it as one of the five alternatives to Lightroom. There are some new features which definitely extend the usage. Uh, the biggest thing, of course, is that there's been loads of speed improvements. So it would process raw files faster and just the whole program is just faster in general. Now, that's not really something, something that you can quantify and say, you know, big new feature, but as Lightroom themselves have done it recently as well, uh, we do know that performance is utterly something that photographers, me especially, find really, really important. If everything's really, really slow, it's just impossible to work. So Luminar have gone and done a lot of work to improve. As well as that, they've added a few things such as automatic lens corrections and DCP profiles. So we'll look at those now and just let's go through it. Do stay till the end, folks, where I give you a discount code that will give you $10 off either Luminar or off Aurora HDR. So here I have an image open in Luminar and it's just a sunrise scene from a while ago. And let's have a look at the first new feature, which is the DCP profiles. So I'm going to add a filter here and it's going to be the raw develop because this is a raw file. And we have options inside here for that. And the first thing we notice here is that at the top we have this profile, which is Luminar default. And we can see that we have external profiles such as Adobe Standards, we can switch that. So that will give us the view as if this was an Adobe Standard profile. And um, you may have seen other ones in there. These are ones I've already loaded in and um, just during tests and stuff like that. So recent profiles like this. But where I've got them from is I've gone load custom DCP profile. And I've actually come into where I've have some profiles created. Now I created this profile inside the DNG camera editor and you can see what it does here. So and I'll even show you just very basically what's happening. So I, I click on a point here for a color that becomes this kind of active circle. Now I don't have to strictly use that one. I can actually say, let's say I want to go along these pinks and control the pinks and you drag the whole spot. And then by moving around here, by moving outwards, you make it more saturated. By moving the arrow around, you can change the hue. You can also change the lightness value as well. So you can darken pink slightly, for example, if you wanted. Um, so these are the list of color changes that I've made into it as well. So we can see that it's become more saturated. And I've also created a little bit of a tone curve, so it's automatically got a little bit more contrast built into it. Okay, now I've actually changed this one. So what I can do here is I can export this as a profile. And it's automatically going into the camera profiles uh, location, which is the default. And uh, so I'm going to call this Sunrise 2. Save. And it's exported and we can see that it's shown up in the folder so i'm going to select sunrise 2 open boom so we can see that we've made a massive massive difference here to the image in terms of contrast and saturation because of the fact that i've shifted those color primaries uh, now this is on a fujifilm file and there are no camera matching profiles in this even in adobe the camera matching profiles that you have are not available as actual profiles they're actually built into the file or at least from what i've been able to find out they're built into the file they're not separate profiles like canon and nikon for example so if you are using a canon camera you would have more options here now the other thing that i've also done is load a dcp profile from dng this was kind of experimental to see if i could get those profiles over i'd save the dng file with a film emulation in it and so uh, this luminar test one so i click open for that DCP already exists. Well, that's because I've loaded it already here before, which is this one here, Luminar Test. And we can see that's flat. So that's just gone back to the flat file, basically, and because it doesn't have a profile built into it already. So the great thing about this is that any of the DCP profiles that have been created, so if you created stuff with the X-Rite, or you created stuff manually yourself in the DNG Profile Editor, uh, you can bring it in. DCP stands for DNG Camera Profile, just in case you're wondering about that. And now just by way of example, here is a Canon shot. Obviously this is a bit skewed, um, but this is just to show you Luminar Default, and we can see external profiles. We have Camera Faithful, Camera Landscape, etc. So these are the camera matching profiles that are available from Adobe. Uh, so it's able to detect them and use them. So if you had Nikon, it would have the Nikon ones, etc. and stuff like that. 
and there is obviously the default luminar default so the idea with the luminar default is this is what skylum have set up as their basic look for your photographs to get started it's a little bit more saturated and contrasty than adobe standard and that is a look at one of the new features which is dng camera profiles so we may as well stick with this image for the next feature which is in lens so we're in raw develop because this is a raw file so if we now go here we now have auto correction so we now have lens distortion chromatic aberration and defringe so we have automatic lens distortion it's very obvious in this image when i click on lens distortion that we get a change we can see that the shape of the image changes as we do that so if we turn it off we can see that we're getting this uh, correction going on automatically now it'll also correct for chromatic aberration automatically chromatic aberration is the kind of green and red fringing that you'll see and a defringe are for or well rather the cyan and red and the yellow and blue and whereas defringe is the the other colors which are the magenta and the green which go around edges they're probably a little bit more evident when you use shallow depth of field so if you're shooting with like an f1.2 lens you're more likely to get this green fringing or along highlight edges as well other options that you have here are lens distortion so as you hover over the slider we get this grid this grid allows you to line up stuff and see where things are so you can pull of course backwards and forwards here to add different amounts of pin cushion and barrel correction double click will reset it and D vignette will lighten the edges so if we bring it up full here we can see that it's gotten lightened and then you can change the midpoint of that lightening with that slider there look at the other additions are really performance enhancements and all of that kind of speed things like import speed on mac is up and one thing that i should really mention because i'm on a mac here is that we're now heading towards windows parity so a lot of the features that were missing from uh, luminar are now available uh, on windows so there are they are doing a really good job of catching up and trying to keep the two different operating systems on a par uh, which is excellent because obviously skylum was originally mac phone and we're mac only and they're working really really hard to be top notch on windows as well hey folks i hope you found that useful please do give it a thumbs up uh, one really really good thing that's happened is that i've been talking to skylum and they've actually given me a discount code which is sean mac photo and with that you will get ten dollars off luminar that's either the upgrade or a full version and you'll also get ten dollars off aurora hdr if you want to go for that as well which is great so folks do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell to get notified of when new videos come online folks thank you for taking time to watch this video and i will see you in the next one